Okay, five minutes for your presentation. Five minutes for your presentation and then question and answer round. Laptop is not cleaning my device. Shall we make it work? Good afternoon everyone, my name is Akash Ustogi. Today I'll be talking about the production of music, how we can create a music or how we can produce the music. So, for producing a music, we have four very basic major steps. Step one. So, as I told you, we have four very, very major steps for creating a music or producing a music. So, step first, recording process, second, editing process, third, mixing process, and fourth is uh, the last masking process. So, the first process, the recording process, has five elements. Number four is creating a track to follow. Track in our music language is a BPM. BPM is beat per minute. Beat per minute is like at what tempo or what speed I have to start and end my sound. So, BPM is like one, two, three, four. Now, I have this speed. On this speed only, I have to start and end my song and introduce my all instruments on this per particular beat only. Second week of rhythm section. Rhythm section is a very, very, very important section in the song. It is the backbone on the song. As you all heard, like, Be taala chal sakta hai, but be sura nahi chalega. Sorry, maine kala bola. Be sura nahi chalega, lekin be taala bhi nahi chalega. Maine phir se kala bola. Be taala nahi chalega, lekin be sura bhi nahi chalega. Be sura chal sakta hai, lekin be taala nahi chalega. That is a correct form. So we have to very strong on our rhythm. The third thing, harmony. Harmony is our sur. At what sur we have to choose the song. Sur, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. We have seven sur in our <coughs> classical language. So whatever the singer comfortable in, he, he or she has to choose that particular sur. The third, record the melody. This is the very favorite part of my uh, thing. Melodies are like what instrument I have to enter on that particular song. It can be guitar, bass, piano, drums, or etc. The fourth thing, adding colors. Adding colors like we have to add a little, little part to make the song beautiful. We have to play little, little, very, very, very important things to make that particular song beautiful. Step number second, the editing process. Editing process contains five elements. Pitch editing. Pitch editing is like at what pitch I have to edit my song. Second, time editing. At what time signature I have to edit my song? Noise reduction. As we all know in the studio, we have very, very high quality mics, so they catch a little bit sound. So we have to delete that sound so that it could not make our song messy. Comping. Comping is like to introduce the best part of that particular instrument. And last is arrangement to arranging all the instrument on the one flow. Step third, the mixing, mixing process. Balancing pedal. No instrument sound too loud or soft or its relation to other. Second, panning. Give each instrument its own space. As we all know, every, every instrument have their different, different sounds. So everyone has to give their own space so that they can present their best whatever they can do. Equalization. Equalization like no other instrument have to be very loud or very low. They have to be on their particular sound. Comp compression, compression is like a dynamic range. Whatever a dynamic range in the sound, it should be very clear to the audience. Reverb, reverb is like to make the sound loud or to come back the feedback of that particular sound. Automation allows to change setting at different points in the sound to give we or makes a sense of movement. Fourth and the last step is the mastering process. Mixing loudness, as I told you, mixing is done in the uh, before step. So, though the further compression limiting so the average signal level over time is high as possible without sacrificing much dynamics. As I said, the dynamics is very important. The every every musician or every instrument have their own space. 
So we have to make that particular dynamic sound a bit loud other than the other instruments. Balance frequencies, like I told you, we have to frequency all the balancing instrument sounds so that it could not create a messy sound. L last step, studio winding. Stereo winding using a plug in so that we can add other things which could be left on the song like we are not liking a particular student. In this process we can cut out that particular thing and add the other thing whatever we have to do. So these are the four major steps which from which we can create a music or like we can create a sound anywhere, whatever, wherever we have to be. Thank you. Okay, thank you Akash, a nice presentation. We have a couple of questions like uh, What's the basic difference between noise and sound? And my second question is, human ear. What's the relation between the human ear and sound? All right. Uh, the answer for your first question is sound and the noise. Sound is a thing which gives us a positive vibes. Like, I play uh, some beautiful melodies, I'll be liking it and I'll be enjoying it. And I'll be playing something messy, that will be noise which will which disturb your mind that is the difference between sound and a noise second thing you said what is the difference between a human ear and a sound the relation the relation the between the human ear and, and the sound uh, being a musician there is a very important relation between a human ear and a sound if you are not in good ear training you can't be a good musician because everything comes from here. We have to listen this, then we have to improvise this on the instrument. So this is the basic relation. First, we have to listen whatever the particular music is going in our mind, or whatever the particular music we are singing, or whatever the particular music sheets are given by our music director, we have to listen this. Then we have to improvise this on our instrument. So first listening it, then improvising it on our instrument, this is the basic relation between human ear and the sound. Um, I have a small question. Um, uh, like you said, he, um, I mean, I can see through your CV that you have been really passionate about music, right? So, um, the students that we, uh, I mean, that generally come in, half of them are really very passionate. They, they even know about music. But then there are students, there is, there's a lot of students um, uh, who are actually not, um, I mean, they, they like music. But then they don't know how to go about it. Just like you said, be sure to play it, but be tala nahi chale. But then there are students, shagin ko beats ki pehchan na ho. But in aapke pas time bhi limited hota hai. So how would you go about it so that in a limited amount of time you can create whatever you have to create about music or the passion and the 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 understanding about the music. That's what I want. Yeah, this is very true. Like many of the students don't know about the particular rhythm. They don't know how we can play our music on the time. Timing is very important in music. So what we can do is their uh, their name is metronome. We can play that metronome and we can sing his voice to that particular metronome so that that guy will come in the rhythm and play that particular music, whatever, which we have given to him. Uh, what you're saying is the temporary thing, right? What I'm trying to say is that how would you create the understanding? You are giving him a temporary solution. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is how would you create that kind of a un, that kind of an understanding of that person through uh, whatever uh, you are teaching. How would you teach in that manner? Yeah, like if a student is not in a rhythm or he he don't know anything about rhythm, rhythm or music, first I'll understand his what he want actually to do. Like he's good in playing, he's he's not good in rhythm. Like I give him the work which he is perfect into. After that, that will be the secondary thing. First, I'll create his presence on that work. After that, slowly, 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 I'll ask him to do work on that particular thing so that I'll connect those things together. So this is the only way uh, a student can, can connect up to this. Okay, thank you, Akash. Can we have uh, Manish Kaushik?
How much visualization is important in graphic design? Yes. Visualization is very important because after visualization, I can understand 
what is what clients want to us and uh, for clients uh, classification we can we uh, need to visualize the logo or any type designs You okay. talk about this. You can just please continue. Let's continue. You talk about principle of design. Yes. You mentioned only three principles of design. Yes. So, uh, are you agree only there are three principles of design? No, sir. There are many, but I know three. You know only these three. Okay. Okay. Let's go back uh, in the history. Why graphic designing started and when? Nearly what year this uh, actually? This method of presenting the things started. Uh, so then, uh, graphic designing started sir, and, uh, before many years, like I think uh, 1940s, and Beckles, I think, started from it. Uh, and sir, now what was the significance, necessity to start? So it's the necessity for printing. Uh, when the newspaper starts, then uh, designing starts. So, okay. Fine. Right. If you you have done a lot of work with logos, yes, so whenever you are making logos or designing the logo, yes, do you consider the shape, yes, size, and the color also? Yes, sir. Okay. If we say that uh, the significance of using the color blue, yes, what's the significance of using the color blue? The color uh, blue is uh, like uh, soft color. And uh, why you are using circles? Sir, circles. It's the uh, uh, logos uh, like your clients needs. Clients are the thing that in this type of thing. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Can we have? Good afternoon, all. Uh, first of all, I would like to introduce myself. I am Rahul Verma from Meerut. It's my hometown. As far as my education is completed, I have completed my MBA in 2014. Currently, I am working with the Dr. Reddy Foundation as a soft skill trainer as well as a hospitality trainer. What we did, we provide the uh, training to the Islam candidates and then give the training and 45 days training and provide the placement also in the Dr. Reddy Foundation. As I got the opportunity in this uh, institute before the two uh, year, I came here for the applying this course in the School of Hospitality was is going to be open. So that time there was no vacancy of that, so I did apply and I got the opportunity again, that's why I came here. Thank you for this, uh, got the opportunity. And this I am going to represent the hospitality sector. How the hospitality sector is famous and is special and there is a lot of uh, things which are using during the presentation. Sorry, I'll talk about this uh, in the hotel industry, a lot of uh, department like purchase department, account department, HR department, but we'll talk about the major department through which we can get the revenue, we can get generate the revenue is food production, f and service and housekeeping and front office. For this uh, department is through we can uh, generate a lot of re revenue. I am giving the presentation on my accommodation as a specialty in a housekeeping department, that's why I am giving the presentation on house, uh, housekeeping. Why the housekeeping department is important? Impo how the housekeeping department is only the department out of four departments because if we talk about the production department, service department and uh, rest front office department, we can, with the help of housekeeping department, we can generate the revenue maximum because we can sell the room, we can sell the room over again and again. But in the front office and F&B service, the food production, like uh, sell the product, of like any dishes, so this is uh, sold out. So, but with the help of rooms, we can uh, use this again and again and get, uh, generate the revenue again and again. That's why the housekeeping department is out of four department is very uh, much importance comparison to other department. I will talk about this. Why the guests returning to the hotels again and again? A lot of things comes in like cleaning and happiness because housekeeping department is focused first to provide the hygienic area to the guests. 
hygienic atmosphere to the gas so that the gas comfortable ki we are coming from home is like home from home to home like send is good services if we are getting the good service so definitely will again to the uh, will visit the again to that hotel and this facilities lot of facilities you provide to the guests as well as the convenience and local according to the lot of things are coming when we uh, the customers uh, comes at the hotel and visit the hotel a lot of expectation from the hotels importance of housekeeping important of housekeeping as we told you ki housekeeping is very important for you because we have to concentrate on that department so that we can generate the revenue as much as we can because without uh, housekeeping department we, we cannot survive in the hospitality sector housekeeping is only those departments which provide a different type of like front office uh, we some areas two types of areas we have like front office department and then back of the house so front office department uh, will talk about before this meal uh, through this i would like to share something with you through this activity through this session we have an activity through during the session so that we can engage the student as much as uh, never be feel like boring so if this is uh, i make this pre presentation on the for the candidates but the candidates is not here i can share this what is this this is a chinese whisper is very activity what we do in this activity i pass the one passage to the one message to the one uh, student and the other another student will pass the same message to the another and candidate in the ear softly in the silent mode nobody can listen this one this uh, same uh, we process all the uh, candidates and after this what were the messages i asked to everyone what was the message so that with the help of this activity okay, rahul we can have question answer round Uh, Mr. Rahul, apart from housekeeping, do you have any other specialization regarding the the four pillars that you are talking about? Yes, sir. Uh, these are front office housekeeping and uh, rooms and uh, the service department. Mm -hmm. Can you also uh, interact with the students regarding the service department also? Uh, no, that service department is proof. Uh, just like we know that all the front office and product housekeeping department is correlated to each other, yes. and the production and service are correlated to each other. Okay. But I can handle the front office department also because in in the absence. of faculty of the front office i take the lot of time for classes of the front office yeah as you are talking about the absence of the faculty in case the faculty of service is absent yeah and can you handle that department definitely i can handle this i have to take the listen this uh, what topic i have to deliver just read out once and give the delivered easily okay and uh, what about uh, there are certain disciplines mm -hmm. also uh, like hospitality involves management also mm -hmm. can you also be encouraging encouragingly taking the management subjects definitely i can like hospitality management like the hotel engineering a lot of subjects except to the hospitality sector so i can handle all the lot of subjects just read out this uh, prepare the notes and give deliver to the candidates okay uh, as your resume has also you have also written that you take pdp classes yeah personality uh, development yeah. so what exactly you uh, encourage how you interact with students with definitely that? yes like uh, currently as you know i i told you ki i working with the dr reddy foundation we provide a pd classes like when we go for the interview like interview skills which is interview skills has to be followed before uh, attending the campus interview what you grooming has to be maintained when you uh, like the punctuality of the timing a lot of thing what is the time of management time management during the time management what you can get what is the effective of the time this lot of comes topics are comes under during the pdp so i take the classes of this uh, and give the uh, deliver to the topic to the aspirant uh, one last question i want to know the technical part in housekeeping what is dirty dozen dirty dozen it means it is countable uh, uh, i give them uh, i dirty dozen is related to the laundry uh, is this checklist make is a checklist to make a this which is uh, dirty we have to be mentioned in the checklist i am not confused little bit because uh, uh, last uh, i just to repeat this uh, this types of checklist has to be mentioned that this portion is dirty or this portion is clean that's why has to mention that in comes under the dirty dozen Thank you very much, sir. Okay, Rahul. Thank you so much. Can we have Lakshman Kumar? Good morning to all. This is Lakshman. Uh, I have done my graduation from the Times. Sir, for my behalf. You need to be near mic only. It's being recorded. So. I have done my graduation from the Times. I have been associated with uh, Mila Artisan and as well as uh, in an integrated digital studio that we are dealing in. 
side by side jewelry and material. So here Indian jewelry, I am just presenting about that. Jewelry is a very vast subject. So in that, I have just seg segmented only few of topics. So that's why we can discuss in a very short period of time. So basically, Indian jewelry is regarded as the best jewelry in world, like thousands years of history about that. Like from when we were, our forefathers have not clothes, we were used to just wear uh, plants and all. We have used to just wear the wooden and the stones hanging. So there are a lot of jewelry stuff were coming from thousands years back. So the history is just very, very old. So basically our jewelry in India is designed for girls just to have value, just to have some asset, just to have its uh, association with the family, the royalty, the class. These things are associated with this jewelry and traditionally it comes to nowadays from longer to shorter. So it's a like antique jewelry. It is basically antique pieces like pearls, the stones which are not very much occupied like ruby, like uh, yellow sapphire, blue sapphire. These are things are associated in this categories which are very rare in jewelry segment. It's considered to be antique like which is worn by only dynasties, the empires. So the jewelry which were wear by only those families is only considered in that. Basically, bead jewelry is the stone or a plastic or a metal or anything which is considered to be a bead and converted in jewelry. It is considered to be a bead jewelry. Then a bridal jewelry, like any any of uh, stones, any of uh, metals like silver, like gold. Nowadays, gold is shifting, silver is shifting, and brass is just coming. So, metal jewelry is also coming from very high costing to low costing. So, it's a just the size matters. Metal jewelry is having very high much, very uh, big size, very. Uh, stone containing very thick, very bold statements are there in bridal jewelry. Now a filigree work. Filigree work is just a uh, small elements of any wire or any sheet is considered to be combined together and it is converted into jewelry form like anything. Uh, there is a work in Odisha called Tarakashi work. That is basically our uh, ancient times filigree work from India. Then I said uh, many types of jewelry like materials are used nowadays. So gold jewelry is also part of that. Then handmade jewelry. Basically nowadays it's a sand casting, casting, then previously handmade jewelry were in tradition only. Handmade jewelry means everything, the every element, every single or tiny element is done by only hand, not by machines. Means directly not machines. Machine tools were used, but not total tools. Like total machinery is not used in this segment. So this segment is very crafted segment. This is totally uh, valuable segment we can say. Then ivory jewelry, like. Uh, Lakshmi, can we have a question answer? No? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I have one question only, then I will pass the mic to others. Uh, what's the basic relationship between costume and jewelry? Costume. <coughs> costume is basically associated with the particular theme. And jewelry is like, it is for any purpose. Like costume, jewelry, or Jewelry and costume is two things. Jewelry is associated with the value and the things which we, we can choose any time. But costume jewelry, if we can say, then it should be a 
thin based jewelry like bridal jewelry is a bridal jewelry but when we used to daily basis, on daily basis we cannot wear the bridal jewelry so costume jewelry is basically associated, associated with particular theme if anything which is uh, uh, like I, if we can say um, heavy metals and uh, the, the subcultures are there like so gothic heavy metals grunge so these are if, if we can consider in that format then elements of any theme or any okay. particular thank you, thank you. Lakshmi, in the second slide, you mentioned about antique jewelry. Yes. Are you sure jewelry made up of pearl and rubies are considered as antique jewelry? Not, not exactly. The pearls and rubies are considered. Antique means the ancient era in ancient... What is one main characteristic of antique jewelry that differentiates it from all other types of jewelry? It looks like it is belong to past era. The finishing is yes, done that. Yes, the way. finishing. Yeah. The combination of overall finishing, the stones, the material used and the technique. All right, all right. Uh, then you discussed about the bridal jewelry also. Yes. Right? So what are the main characteristics or constituents of bridal jewelry? Can you name some of them? Bridal jewelry is basically, it may be a choosy thing. It, not, it need not be huge and big as you discussed. Like no, nowadays, no. if you go, at any wedding, you will not see the brides wearing all these kinds of jewelry. But there are certain items, articles that are, that were there and that are still there. Can you just name some of them? Oh, the segment of the bridal jewelry and like chumka, chandbali, then choker, then rani haar, kamarban, bajuban. So these are the element, uh, the products lining bridal jewelry. But the material is always the gold. The stone will be the not necessarily gold. Not necessarily. That's why I'm saying that it depends upon the families or dynasty. Okay, can you tell me some characteristics of the Renaissance jewelry? Sorry? Renaissance period. Jewelry of the Renaissance period. You must have studied all the art movements. Yeah. Art deco, art novo, Renaissance. Uh, right, I, I don't have any clues. Alright, thank you. Lakshman, yes. uh, you explain about the filigree work. Yes. You know, uh, in which state uh, this work is actually does, and uh, on which metal we do filigree work. Basically, I have just uh, spoken about Odisha that Tarakasi that is in silver. Hmm. Yes. Uh, so only in silver we do filigree. No, no, no. Work? Any like uh, metal like uh, gold, silver, brass, anything, but not platinum. But it's a very hard material, so it, it can be only casting. The casting is done only in plat uh, platinum uh, thing, but gold, silver and brass. Because of gold is very precious, it needs cutting and the finishing part, so the wastage becomes more. That's why the uh, gold is less used in that segment, less used. But basically it's the silver and brass. Okay. And uh, can you tell me, Lashman, what is the actual area of your interest, like uh, uh, which all subjects you can teach in uh, jewelry design? Jewel, uh, basically, jewelry design uh, need to have a different form, first of all, because uh, if we can say a designer have differentiation between the carrier uh, and the regional uh, uh, human beings, like in Kolkata or in uh, Ahmedabad. Yes, I would reframe the question. Ma'am, I wanted to ask no, what just, department yes. like, you have merchandising, you have manufacturing, okay. you have designing. So what is your I favorite? have also uh, expertise in uh, designing, then form generation, then concept, uh, conceptualization, then manufacturing, <coughs> then the material segment. Like how material should be good for that particular design. Like if filigree is used in any format, casting cannot be used. So the material choosing and technique choosing is the main thing and second thing the exact and perfect diagram like drawing so that is the main thing part? yes okay. so basically it is the uh, in mathematics we can say the uh, orthographic projections is the re main requirement of that uh, sketching part so sketching is the three dimensional thing it can be done by easily but if you have to understand that which technique should be there at where uh, one more question, one last question. Yeah. Uh, which, uh, do you use any software for designing uh, jewelry? Basically, Coral. Okay. 
That is for 3D. I have basic yeah. ideas. I don't. I am not uh, right now not working, so I cannot have okay. that much confidence. Fine. Thank you. Any questions? No, it's okay. Thank you, Rakshan. Okay. Uh, thank you, everyone.